We have breaking news now in the Ohio Republican Senate primary race. CNN can now project that J.D. Vance will win the GOP nomination. Let's go right to John King at the Magic Wall. John, what are you telling us? This is a victory for J.D. Vance, Laura. It's also a victory. You cannot sugarcoat this for Donald Trump as well, who endorsed J.D. Vance. And you see a turnout on Election Day in Ohio powering J.D. Vance. We have about 70 percent of the vote counted now. This lead has stretched over the last hour, stretched from 20,000 to 40,000 to 50,000, now just shy of 50,000. J.D. Vance with 31 percent of the vote. Josh Mandel, the former state treasurer, a very pro-Trump candidate, but he did not get Trump's endorsement, running second to 24. The more establishment Republican, State Senator Matt Dolan, uh, was in the hunt early on but he simply faded as J.D. Vance. See all these rural counties? This is J.D. Vance's color here. See all these rural counties up here? Just like Trump built it up in Ohio and ran away with the state against Joe Biden, rural Ohio, not exclusively, but very much powering the math behind what we now project will be a J.D. Vance victory. And you just go in some of these counties. I'm just going to tap randomly here. Uh, you know, again, he's rel relatively, relatively close in some of them, but you pick up several hundred votes in a small rural county like that. You move over here, you're picking up several hundred more votes here. This is how Donald Trump does it in small town and rural America and J.D. Vance with the Trump endorsement doing it in Ohio tonight. Another place where if Matt Dolan, the more establishment candidate, was uh, to have an upset, he needed to do it down here, the third largest county in the state, Hamilton County. That is Cincinnati. It's where J.D. Vance's headquarters is tonight. Uh, look, you see J.D. Vance running just narrowly ahead right now. But if there was to be an, a magic establishment strike back moment against Donald Trump, this would have to be for Matt Dolan at the moment with only 26 percent. Still a ways to go there, but J.D. Vance leading there. But, Laura, just look. Just look. This is how, if you go back to the presidential race in 2020, see all that red? That's Donald Trump. That's how he does it. Joe Biden won in Cleveland. He won in Cincinnati. He won in Columbus. Joe Biden won the three largest counties in Ohio, but he won only seven counties in Ohio because Donald Trump runs it up in small town America. And if you look at the Senate race tonight, you know, J.D. Vance, he's going to be he's at 31 percent because of the crowded field. But we project him the winner because of that. And there is no doubt, no doubt on this one night with a long way to go to see how it plays out throughout the primary season. On this night, a victory for Vance is a victory for Trump. Let's bring back in our top political minds, Abby Phillip, David Chalian, and Dana Bash. Um, I'm wondering who is relieved and who is anxious now, not you all personally, but in terms of the political parties <laughs> and the machinations of, of Capitol Hill. Abby, uh, predicted or not? Yeah, I mean, I think expected, given the Trump endorsement for sure. Um, you know, of all the candidates in the Trumpy wing of the party, I think Vance is one that the establishment thinks they can live with. Um, you know, he made a sharp turn toward Trump uh, in order to run this race, but I think by and large, uh, many Republican uh, establishment types, uh, from from what I have heard, uh, they feel like he can he can run uh, a general election effectively in that state. And perform, uh, perform, you know, decently. And especially if you look at some of these primary, um, you know, returns as they're coming in, he's doing well in the kind of more rural areas, but he's also doing okay in suburban areas. And I think that those are two kind of factors uh, that Republicans are going to look at to see how he might perform in a general election. And not to mention the fact. Ohio has just become a much more conservative state. And so this is going to be an uphill battle for Democrats. It almost doesn't matter who the Republican nominee ends up being. Dana, I hear you um, acknowledging it as well and, and echoing it, that sentiment of how this would be able to maybe be extrapolated even beyond Ohio. What is this telling you in terms of the ability of Donald Trump to have endorsed a candidate to a successful primary victory? but also what it makes make speak to other state primaries that are coming up. Is it a litmus test? I think we have to be careful because although the Republican Party nationally clearly is at the base of it, the primary voters clearly do still support Donald Trump and Trumpism, uh, each state is different. You just showed that, uh, that Ohio in particular, John did, Ohio in particular has become much more red. Uh, in every way. Pennsylvania is uh, a state that is coming up when this other uh, primary test will be out there, whether or not a Trump endorsed candidate, uh, Dr. Oz, will beat somebody who, or if there are a few candidates, but somebody who is more Republican establishment in Dave McCormick. It's unclear, given that electorate, whether or not you will see the, the same kind of uh, dynamic that you saw tonight in Ohio. 
What is also unclear, again, what we were talking about earlier, is how a Trump-endorsed candidate is going to do up against whomever the Democrat is going to be. It's also all, and especially now, starting today in Ohio, it is about the general election. So all the questions you were asking before, how the Supreme Court uh, potential decision on abortion comes into play, other factors come into play, that will all decide whether or not this Ohio state seat, which Rob Portman, the Republican, is leaving, stays in GOP hands. And speaking and David, of that, yeah, oh, sorry. Good. No, that I was, was going to say, David, I want to bring you in on that very notion, because I'm curious, respectfully, what Abby was speaking about in particular, the idea of, and what John was explaining, the where these votes were coming from, how to look at this in terms of what the composition of these voters who were galvanized to come out votes actually means. Yeah, I mean, th this is certainly, as John pointed out, uh, a Trump country kind of turnout uh, for J.D. Vance. Now, remember, we're saying that in the context of a Republican primary, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at the general election map, you see how Democrats have sort of lost any foothold, even in places like Ohio, where they used to have it, uh, in terms of rural areas. Uh, and, and Donald Trump sort of wiped that away in his last two presidential elections. But, I, but what's interesting to see about now that we know it's going to be J.D. Vance, versus Tim Ryan. It's like, how does that shape up? And we see Democrats out of the gate immediately, within minutes of Vance yeah. being projected the winner here, trying to frame him as a California elitist who wrote the Hillbilly Elegy and made a lot of money from a Netflix movie on it and not of Ohio. I don't know if you're a Trump-endorsed candidate who just pulled a lot of votes from rural Ohio that yeah. that kind of frame will stick. Well, you know, I want to go to Jeff Zeleny. He's live at J.D. Vance headquarters in Cincinnati. What are you seeing over there, Jeff? A lot of excited J.D. Vance supporters, Laura. You can see the crowd behind me listening to the song Gloria, and they believe that J.D. Vance will be taking the stage momentarily. And there is no doubt that endorsement from President Trump about two and a half weeks ago led to this victory tonight. The question going forward, can he consolidate other Republicans? And just talking to a variety of uh, Republicans who supported his uh, challengers, they say yes. They say that J.D. Vance can speak to the base of the party, which he proved tonight, and he can also speak to the intelligentsia of the party, if you will, the establishment wing of the party. So this victory is really quite extraordinary. Uh, just about three weeks ago, he was near the bottom of the pack, and it was that endorsement uh, at, a, uh, at a rally in uh, Delaware County from, from the President Trump that did indeed give him the credibility to overcome all of uh, the doubters. But uh, what we are going to hear tonight, I'm told, is J.D. Vance trying to unify this Republican Party and immediately going after Tim Ryan. He will be trying to portray him as uh, simply uh, part of the Democratic Party part of the Biden party, he may say tonight. So clearly this is a, uh, a large win for J.D. Vance in his first bid for public office. And this is going to be a test, but we do know Ohio is increasingly becoming a red state. So will this be competitive uh, in the fall? It will be in the sense that Tim Ryan is a strong Democratic candidate, but this simply is a tough uphill battle for Democrats. They know that, Laura.